it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today I am here to show you my new yoga shawl. Now recently I had my colours done and I'm a winter type and that means I can wear the black and the greys but also very bright colours like the pink. So I thought it would be time to make a new yoga shawl. My shawl that I wear for going to yoga has some of the forbidden colours in it. I know, I know, but you know, any excuse, right? So I was going to make my new yoga shawl in the neutrals from my winter pack. So that means the black, the grey, the lighter grey, the darker grey, and then choose one of my really bright colours as a contrast. Now, to be honest, this shawl is really simple. Once you have the increase down, you'll be fine working on it. It will be such an easy shawl. But using colours in the way that I am here, where I've chosen five neutral colors and then the one really bright one then the placement of the colors that's what makes this shawl so striking so let me show you what you need so like i said i have here my five colors silver hint of silver gray black and graphite those are all the neutral ones so to speak and then here i have bright Pink. So choose whichever colours you fancy. Of course, you can copy these. I do have all my yoga clothing in black, so I thought this shawl would go with it perfectly. So other than your yarn, you will also need, of course, your scissors, a darning needle. And then here I have my crochet hook. So this is DK yarn meant for a four crochet hook. But today I am using a five crochet hook. So I have gone up by one and a half sizes from the hook size that I usually use. So I normally use a three and a half. I have gone up to a five. So you might need to go up to a five and a half if you usually use a four. If you go up already from a four, still go up by one and a half sizes if you can. OK, but do try it out. Try and get started. Feel the fabric and it needs to be loose and lacy and holy to make the shawl really lovely and flexible and to make sure that it hangs around your shoulders really nice and warmly. So let's get started on the tutorial. Now, for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to be using silver and I will be um, putting up a picture later on, which makes it very clear where I have put my uh, colours so you can copy them as well. But there will also be a list of exactly how many rows I did in each colour in the pattern for this shawl. And yes, there is a pattern for this shawl available on my website, so do go and have a look there. And you can also buy the individual balls of yarn there if you so wanted to. So let's get started. Make your slip knot. Insert your hook and we're going to do two chains. Now the first chain is going to act as our magic circle. The second chain is going to be our turning chain. So do your second chain. Then we are going to do a double crochet into the first chain here, which is our magic circle. So you yarn over, you go into that first chain Make sure you try and pick up two loops at the back, one at the front here. Bring up your yarn and you do a double crochet. Then you do a chain. And then you do another double crochet again into that same first chain there, which we have called our magic circle. There we go. Then you do two chains, one 
two. This will be the tip of your shawl. Then you do another double crochet into that same chain there. There we go. You do a chain one and another double crochet into there. And this is a little bit fiddly, but it should be fine. Okay, and this is the first row of your shawl done. So this is the tip here, and these are the outer ends. You now have four double crochets in this little contraption here. <music> So now for round two, and round two is the one that you will be doing the most of. So each time you want a full row of double crochets, this is what you are going to do. First of all, we are going to start our row and it's the same way every time. You do your little chain here. This is your turning chain. Then you turn your work and then into the stitch where that turning chain is coming out of, you're going to place a double crochet. So try and get into that very first one there. Voila. Not only that, you are also going to do a chain one and another double crochet in that same stitch. because we need to increase each row and this is the ideal way to do that. Then you will see that the next stitch is a chain. So we are going to place a double crochet around the chain. There we go. And then you will place a double crochet on top of each double crochet until you reach the tip. But of course, because we've only just started, it will just be the one here. So pick up this stitch here and you do your double crochet. Then of course you've reached the tip and once again the tip is the same everywhere. So you're going to yarn over, do your double crochet into the chain space like so. Two chains and another double crochet into that same chain space. And this is your tip. And then to get started on the next side, you're going to place one double crochet on each double crochet along the side. And you start in this one here. So this here is the V that belongs to that double crochet there. So that's the one that you need to be picking up. And then of course, when you get to the end of your shawl here, the end of the side, you will see that there is a chain space. So you do the double crochet around the chain space and then the last stitch here. Now, if you look at it, you will see that that V that we created earlier always lies towards the front for me. And if you know that it's towards the front, all you have to do is tip the work towards you. So I'm going to yarn over ready. I'm going to tip over my work and I'm going to find this V here. This is the top of the stitch that we did to get started on that first row. And carefully, yeah, I'm picking that one up. And by doing that, I'm going to pull it into position and I'm going to make my double crochet. Then you do a chain one and another double crochet around that same V that you've picked up round the front there. There we go. And if you do it like this, you know that after the chain space, you have to do this little contraption here. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, but it has to go into that V that lies towards the front. So let me show you again how to go about doing row two. So now we are doing row three, but we are repeating row two. So chain one, turn. Now we are going to do into that first stitch, we are going to do 
double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So you yarn over, you insert, you pull up a loop. You yarn over, you pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And do you see this V here now? This is sort of a little bit larger of a V and this always ends up facing this way. But that is exactly that one that we had to go and find on the other side when we come back here. So you might want to put stitch markers in that one if you find it difficult to go and find it. But if you know it's there, you know you have to go and look for it, so to speak, you will remember to do it and you will not forget to do it. And you will be doing the necessary increases that you need for your shawl to grow correctly. So we've just done the double crochet, then you do the chain one and another double crochet into that first stitch. Then you encounter the chain space. Yeah, you do a double crochet in there. Then you encounter the double crochets. So you're going to be placing double crochets on top of those. And you do that all the way to the tip. There we go. Then in the tip, you are going to place a double crochet, two chains and a double crochet. And then you start working your other side again. And this is the location where you're going to be starting to do that. So one double crochet on top of every double crochet in that row. Until, of course, there we go, that's my last one here. Until you meet the chain space, you put a double crochet around the chain space. And then we are going to do uh, double crochet, chain one, double crochet into this V here, into this stitch here that you see lying towards the front. So you sort of have to tip it over and go and find that V. And doing it this way, your triangle will grow really nicely and it will have the correct increases you need for it to be a lovely triangle. So each row will increase with six stitches. So in that first row, we had four double crochets. So we're not counting the chain spaces. OK, so four double crochets. Row two, we had 10 double crochets. And now row three, we have 16 double crochets. So each row will increase with six double crochets and each row will have these increases here so a double crochet a chain one and a double crochet then here the tip double crochet two chains and a double crochet and here on the other side the same thing double crochet chain one double crochet you want to change color, you're going to have to count the number of row that you are doing. So this is one, two, three. So the next row that I'm doing is a number four. I can't do my boxes on an even number. So I am going to do another row with you here. Doing my little double crochet, chain one, double crochet, then a double crochet around the chain space, double crochets on top of the double crochets all the way to the tip. Then the tip. side
Then when I get to the chain space, I do a double crochet in the chain space. And when you've done the double crochet around the chain space, that's almost like the signal of, yeah, this is where you need to go find that stitch and do your increase at the end of the row. There we go. So now I have done four rows, one, two, three and four. And now my next row is going to be an uneven row. And this is where I can do boxes. So I'm going to show you now how to go about doing the boxes. But of course, I have done in my first color, which was a bright pink, I did 10 rows. And then the 11th row was my boxes row. So obviously this is for demonstration purposes, but you can do whatever you want. But of course, it's easiest to do your boxes as an uneven row because then it will work out, okay? So now that I have completed four rows, I'm going to do my fifth row, the uneven row as a boxes row. So you chain one, you turn, and we are going to get started by doing the usual. So we do our double crochet, chain one and a double crochet in the first stitch. Then for boxes, we do a chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next stitch. So that's what we're going to do. So chain one, skip one. We're going to skip the chain, double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next stitch. There we go. And so this is how we are going to be making our boxes. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next one. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next one. And of course we go all the way to the tip. Now, as you will notice here, you've got one left over to skip. So chain one, skip this one, and we do the tip that we are used to in the tip. There we go. So now we are going to chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next one. Just the same thing on the other side. And of course, each row, you will notice that you will get more and more double crochets. And of course, each time you do this boxes row, you will get more and more boxes as well. OK, so this is where we're at now. Then here we have the chain space, which we are skipping. So chain one, skip the chain space. And then you do the usual double crochet, chain one and double crochet in chain one and double crochet into that last stitch there, which you have to go and find. There we go. So this is the end of this color. So you end the color in a boxes row. OK, so now we're going to cut off this color. And I'm going to bring in the next color. So I'm going to be using the gray. And to be honest, what I've been doing is I've been undoing the last pull through and then I pull it through with the new color. There we go. So we have changed color. Now we are going to chain one, turn and do the usual. So into that first stitch with our double crochet, chain one and double crochet. There we go. So now, of course, we need to make up our row of double crochets again, but we have a contrasting color. So you're going to see if we're going to go into the stitch and then around the chain space into the stitch. That's going to create a sort of not so neat look. So what I've come up with is quite a nice way of making sure that we have a nice row of double crochets. So 
first of all, into this chain space here, we are going to be placing a double crochet around the chain. There we go. And then normally we would be placing a double crochet in here into that double crochet. But like I just said, that's not going to look so nice. So I've come up with a way of doing this. So we place two double crochets in each box. But here, this box also needs two double crochets. But really, it's not big enough. So in this next box here, I have put three double crochets. So one is to make up for this one here on its own. Okay, so this is what we are going to do. So in that first little box, you place one double crochet. The next box, you place three. And then all the rest, you will place two double crochets. There we go. And that makes for quite a nice row of double crochets after your boxes row. And so you continue until you get to the tip. And the tip you will be doing as we normally have been doing one double crochet, two chains and one double crochet. There we go. And then when you start the other side, you are going to be placing the two double crochets in each box. And you work your way all the way to the end of the side. Yeah. But then when you get to the end and you are in the box in front of the little box here, that's where you're going to place three double crochets. Because we need that extra one to make up for the fact that we can only place one in there. There we go. And of course, the last stitch is to be done the way we have always done it. One double crochet, one chain and one double crochet. There we go. So now, of course, we are ready to start doing the repeat of row two again. Of course, that means chain one, turning and doing your double crochet, one chain and double crochet. Then a double crochet into the chain space and then a double crochet on top of every double crochet of the side, doing the tip and coming back up the side, ending in a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And of course, now you can choose however many rows you want to do in each of the colors. Remembering that you need to do the boxes on an uneven row. And then, of course, after that, you do your new color in the row, what I'm calling the row after the boxes row, to make sure you get your double crochets again. So feel free to play around with the colors as you like. But here I have my colorway. And so take a screenshot of it or write it down, pause the video and copy down um, the row numbers and the colors that I did them in. So, of course, when my shawl was finished, I added some tassels to it because, of course, what's a yoga shawl without tassels, right? I chose bright pink for my tassels and I wound lots of strands around my chocolates box. This gives me strands of 30 centimeters. So I cut them open and I have lots and lots of strands. Then I take another piece of string about 50 centimeters, fold it double, 
and fold it around my strands like this, making sure it's in the middle and I tie this with a double knot really tightly so all the strands stay together and I will tie it again just to make sure it is secure and again just for insurance. And then I take string off the ball, I lay it along the tassels and then I start winding this around the top of my tassel. So this is done very very tightly so I pull it really hard and as you can see a nice sphere forms at the top of my tassel. Then I keep going round and round making sure you don't get entangled into the top of those strands there but also making sure that you make a nice band of strands of yarn around the top of your tassel there. So once you've got a nice band of strands you're going to make sure you end at the top and you cut off your yarn. Then you take your darning needle, you insert it into your tassel like this, you put the end of the yarn onto your needle and then you push it in and you go and find the other end of the needle in your tassels and you pull it through to the other end. And this way you have secured your end and now all you have to do is the fun part, cut all the ends the same length. Then it's time to attach the tassel to the shawl. So you've got those two strands at the top of your tassel. I just put them around a box, tie it nicely with a couple of knots. Make sure it's nice and tight. I've never lost a tassel before, but I'm not very careful with them. I just use it abuse it and <laughs> if I should lose a tassel I'm just going to replace it. So again onto the darning needle with the end and you push it into your tassel like so. So it comes out the other end and you pull it through so the ends are into your tassel. You can't really weave them into the shawl because it's a different colour. So if you weave it in you are going to see it through the black. So that's why I decided just to push it into the tassel like this. And it's not a problem. I still made sure that my sphere had a nice shape. And of course you just need to check the base of your tassel now to see that all your strands still have the same length. Each tassel weighs about 10 grams. There we go. So I did three tassels. The shawl fingertip to fingertip is 244 centimeters or 96 inches. The length from the middle of the shawl down to the bum tassel is 36 inches or 90 centimeters. <laughs>
Of course, for me personally, I do like to wear a yoga shawl when I'm walking over to do my yoga and it's just a lovely thing for me to wear. I hope you will make this shawl and wear it for whatever you fancy. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I hope you will try and make this shawl. I would love to see your versions in my Facebook group, so please do post your progress and post your finished project in there. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!